All right, everyone. So we've talked about some general concepts, SEO, SEM, and what's in store, and that things, it's a moving target, that there's concepts of SEO that change. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an activity that I would call step zero before we get really into detail about keywords and all of that we need to do this activity where we sort of need to really understand and define our our purpose online and our company because think about it in this in these terms if my company gets hired to do SEO for your company you might say well how are you gonna represent my company as well I know my company I live and breathe it my my employees love my company you are coming in to represent my company how are you gonna do a good job on behalf of my company so I'm going to give you this handout that my company does or uses for clients so that we can understand the company uh, and then further do other things like a competitor analysis. So let's go back to your desktop so we can open the computer window. So go back to the desktop, open the computer, top left corner. Then in the network location, Classroom data Z is in Z. One open classroom data location, network location. And then you'll see when you scroll down, you'll see my folder, Campos SEO um, Thursday. This is our class folder here. Double click that. Campos SEO 2 Thursday. And I, I added my drawing of the long tail if you want it, but what you want right now is you want to drag the client company profile over to your desktop. If you bought a USB, that'd be good, but if you didn't, you want to drag it to your desktop. Question? Mine has this uh, location not available on it. Uh, hopefully, you didn't get a program. Uh, you can just drag it to your desktop. Yeah, you can Close this window completely. Let's open the internet one more time. Let's try and open it again and have to get a new Let's try to open it again. Let's pop it over here and see if it's there. Did everyone manage to get that file? I did that the other one. Has anyone been able to open that? Yes. yes, exactly. Um, okay. <coughs> okay. Over here, actually. I have one. So I have the graph you did before. Yes, and then there's one called Client Company Profile. That's one. Well, you want. Okay. So if you do have the file, you want to drag it to your desktop, and then we'll open it. We'll double click it again. You can you can print this out a little bit later, but I don't really recommend you print it because you want to fill this in. Let me explain what this document is. Again, as I said, if my company gets hired by a company to do social media or a website or SEO for them, we need to know as much about as possible of that company for us to do a good job. So I'm giving you a version of that for you to know yourself, to know your own company, what's your goal and such online. So this is something that you can fill in. Um, this is not something that you have to fill in and it's homework. There's no homework in my classes. There's no grades in my classes. There's no certificate. You get out of it what you need. 
you get out you get that SEO or you get the knowledge of, of, of social media and such so you don't need to turn this in but uh, if you'd like me to look at your answers and such I can do that just fine so let me explain what's in it there's, there's going to be various questions that you would or sections that you would fill in to define your company and all of these things go into the, the big concepts of marketing so marketing itself is a college major you can get degrees in marketing this is obviously one sheet out of that but uh, to get you thinking about these things such as company name well obviously you have a company name but think about it in terms of why did you choose that name does it have a special meaning or story for example my web design company will be vic.co which is pronounced vic.co and it comes from my name the point of this of, of simply not writing vic.co is this feeds into many aspects of your biography page your about us page the the biography on your LinkedIn account or your Twitter account the definition of your company the persona the brand of your company so if you have some sort of interesting story or why did you choose that name that will help you fill out these biographies and about pages and such tagline think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about think of some famous taglines or slogans why do they stick your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable for example vic.co a great company for your great website obviously companies big companies spend thousands if not millions of dollars in marketing in branding slogans and all of that to create these things that stick with us and make us think of that lawyer when I need a lawyer because I saw that ad because I remember that jingle or that slogan I want to buy that hamburger because I remember the marketing of it so for example what company perhaps has the slogan I'm loving it McDonald's what about just do it Nike of course so there's many companies with many slogans and just do it if you think about it if we didn't know if, if, if we were dropped on this planet from another planet and we heard the slogan just do it we wouldn't know at all that it's for a shoe company it makes no sense just do it your taxes sure that applies mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a shoe company it's an apparel company it's a sports company same thing as I'm loving it that has no meaning if you separate it from the decades of McDonald's history but if it's attached to my local bakery shop that's it makes sense so what I'm getting at here is you also want some kind of slogan a concise sentence tagline of your company especially if you've got an esoteric name for a company like PMD interactive if you had heard of PMD interactive on its own you don't know what that do what that does what how do they interact are they about video games or, or what I, I don't know but if it's PMD interactive web design in San Diego you know if I have some sort of slogan that explains what the company is that's serving a great purpose more branding to explain what the company is if I had a company called Victor's Bakery well obviously the name tells what the company is but if I had Victor's Bakery family friendly bakery in the heart of Eastlake you know some sort of slogan that catches attention like that and you're not you're probably not at the level where some sort of very prosaic slogan like this will cut it you're gonna need some sort of a bit more obvious kind of slogan probably to really be effective so PMD interactive I'm loving it you know obviously it's taken but it doesn't make sense for that kind of company because the name of the company isn't as meaningful without some context you'll have to think about some about us information write a paragraph about your company who founded it what was it about when did you get the idea for it where was it founded why are you in this business how will you make the company a success these answers will help fill your biography on various sites you're not just gonna have a website you're gonna have a Twitter you're gonna have a LinkedIn you're gonna have all of that stuff that you have time or budget for but if you don't go that far, at least you're going to have an About Us page on your site because the spammers don't. The spammers don't have any way to get in touch with them. They're just going to sell their snake oil, disappear, and have your money. But you as a legitimate company are going to have some way for, to get in contact with you, to write about your company so that it's legitimate, to um, 
to allay people's fears that you're a fake company, you're going to have an About Us page. And notice, these are the classic who, what, why, when, where, how questions. The more of these you answer, the better. You don't have to answer them all, but these are things to think about which you will add to your site on the About page, which will help your SEO, because that helps you appear much more like a legitimate company, unlike the spammers. It's also useful then to use on your social media. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make, peop will make everyone take notice. So that's our mission. I could easily have said the mission of, of Vic.co is to make websites. That's very obvious and true, but here is a little bit more of an artistic answer with adjectives and such, marketing spin on it, not exaggeration, not, not lies, marketing. And so um, the purpose of this is also uh, to reach an audience where I have here, why would they hire you? So if I've got this web design company, we saw results that there are a, are a billion results that someone could find on Google or Bing. How am I going to stand out? I'm going to stand out by answering the question of why. So let me take a segue here to draw another chart, another graphic. I'll put it in the network folder. But this is coming from a, a concept that I'll show you what it is in a moment. But I'm going to draw three circles, or uh, ovals. And they're concentric, so there's one inside of another three concentric circles. The outer circle, we will attach the word um, what. The next inner circle, we will attach the word how. And the innermost circle, the word why. This is a concept that comes from an author and a speaker, an entrepreneur named Simon Sinek. And he has a book called Start With Why. And he has various lectures. The concept, in a nutshell, is that these three questions could be applied to leaders, companies, products, just about anything. We're going to apply it to a company. Three questions. What, how, and why? What on Vic.co? We are a web design company. The what is that we engage in web design. Great, you and a billion others. Okay, the how. How do you engage in good web design? How do you run your business as a web designer? Well, we use WordPress and we use Photoshop and such. Great, so do you and another million people. Well, it's decreased a little bit, but it's still a lot of people that also do that. The deepest question and the hardest question is why? Why are you in web design? Why do you do this? And it's perfectly fine to say for the money, for the fame. But the why is the one that's hard to answer because you also have to find an audience where that why also applies to them. A, um, a client that also applies to them. Let's say then in web design, why? Why am I a web designer? Well, I grew up in San Diego. I'm educated in San Diego. I live in San Diego. I love San Diego. I, I live and breathe San Diego. I know not to get on the 5 at 4 o'clock. I'm not going to get home. I know the local culture. The point of that, knowing that why, that I want to make websites for San Diego companies, is why I'm going to search for a San Diego company to do a website for. Because I could do a website for someone in Northern California, in Washington State, in Washington DC, in South Dakota. I could do a website for someone in England. The why of it, why would someone hire me, has to be uh, cooperative in that a client uh, wants to hire me because it fulfills their why, why they need a website, a specific web designer, not just anyone that they can buy for $200, that they can get over the web, someone 
like me that I will do a, a website of two thousand dollars but a much better result than those other ones so that's the hard question to answer it's a big thing and a big topic this author has that book and also free lectures online that further get you thinking about this so if I take a a look on the web for Simon Sinek you'll see all about him and you should have you should see his free lectures about all of this stuff he focuses a little bit more about leaders and such but these concepts still apply this is the golden circles concept that he has there's his drawings right there where you've got those three circles the the what the how and the why and any company or leader can answer all three of them but when we start with why why do we do this why would someone care why would a client hire us that gets you closer to being successful and so that ties into the company profile here because the question of why why would they hire you why your mission statement how does that resonate with those that care you can get examples of mission statements on just about every website that knows about them I'm gonna show you here the mission statement of this college so San Diego Continuing Education down at the very bottom mission to provide ongoing learning opportunities preparing diverse individuals for career advancement a college education or enriched lives through good health and personal fulfillment the mission could very succinctly be to offer free classes the end and that works but this much more wordy type of statement really covers all of these concepts of, of why about who would care we're talking here about the diversity you believe in diversity about career advancement you believe in career advancement you want a better station in life uh, or lifelong learning and education and an enriched life you believe in that stuff we believe in that stuff come take our classes extrapolate that to your company um, create this vision uh, this mission statement that uh, resonates with uh, with potential with a potential customer and again this is a hard thing to answer that why there's books and lectures and concepts all about it but having you think about that you might be thinking this is all part of SEO again this is step zero this is setting up this foundation for being online and then that focuses you to get the traffic to my website so I can sell my realty business my fencing business my watercolor paintings again I'm talking about business as always but what if I if I've got a nonprofit organization and I want people to donate money or time if that mission statement speaks to people they will open their wallets or their hearts or their time and that's why mission statements every company has them perhaps people won't visit this mission statement page on the website very often but what if a person on Bing or Google searches for learning basic skills courses that's one of those keywords that's appearing in the mission statement so if someone goes to Google and search searches basic skills classes basic skills courses it's one of the keywords that has shown up on the site because the search engines browse every page of your site and analyze everything put it in their search engine in their index and when someone searches it and these keywords hit your keywords you could be found and get that traffic the purpose of the college's website take a class all this other stuff is great but the purpose is take a class enroll what's the purpose of the website again the purpose of your website to sell my paintings great there's many things that we can do to improve upon that the purpose of my website just people to read my commentary on the stock market fine you can create a mission statement about providing the best commentary and most reasoned analysis of the volatile stock market blah 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 and when people search that how to ride out a tough stock market and you have that in your mission statement or somewhere on your site you could get found the long tail keywords values and personality are two ways that we personify your company or anthrop 
anthropomorphize your company and that we make it a, a person other than just a thing because all the big companies that spend any time in marketing think about this stuff and pay money for this such as values what are some keywords that your company believes in like orderliness teamwork tolerance etc because again this is to find that audience that cares about that as you define these keywords and you get on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube and create content that follows these values you will find this audience that also believes in the value of discipline and therefore is more apt to hire you because your company is disciplined as well just like they believe they are they want a disciplined financial planner not one that will turn tail and run when the stock market is going crazy rides out the good to reach the uh, rides out the bad to reach the good couple that with personality think of your company as a person how would he or she communicate how would he or she behave for example vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design if your company is more of, a, of an attainable entity than a nameless corporation, no matter your size, you will reach an audience that believes in that that, that, that likes how you communicate and what you communicate. So let's say I have a list of a few possible, I have, I'm looking at tweets from a few possible CPAs. Am I going to be very eager to hire the CPA that their tweets are all about funny cat pictures and frivolous things and writing like a teenager and all of that? Maybe not. I don't want someone like that perhaps to be handling my money. But if that same sort of language is being conveyed in a daycare center, that might be a good indicator of it being a nice, friendly, child-friendly daycare center because the personality fits with it. So every one of these big companies, McDonald's and uh, Nike and Starbucks and all the levels of companies um, are trying to reach an audience uh, because it, uh, th there's so much competition that they're specializing. Um, McDonald's, um, it's showing that they're not the king of hamburgers like they used to be. They're going down. Other, some more of these boutique ones are coming up, these smaller chain ones. Uh, Five Guys Burgers, In and Out, Shake Shack, or Snack Shack, whatever it's called. Those ones are ascending because they're reaching an, an audience that really would care about their personality and values and mission statement and all that consciously or subconsciously. And that's something to think about it as well for your company. Because all of this is, is marketing, all of this is to reach an audience. and. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most successful companies in humanity. It's uh, gained uh, so much mind share and, and, and value monetarily um, that they do it by their personality. If you notice the, the Apple TV ads, uh, the, the, the ads for Apple products, oftentimes the product itself is not the front and center thing. It's the people around it and the birthday party and the child's first steps and, and, and the life being captured by an Apple device. So that personality and, that val and, that, and those values, that marketing is what's one of the reasons propelling a company like Apple to the top. And um, good marketing is about that, about the why rather than the what or the how. Every company can make a cell phone, but not every company can make a cell phone that creates such an amazing video of my family. Well, they all can, but I feel that I make a better video with my iPhone because the marketing, or my Samsung, or my, or my Lumia, or whatever phone I have. And lastly, we've got fundamentals. Just list your address, website, contact, whatever current contact information you have now and perhaps any that you want for the future as a goal and some advice that I can give you here let's say you're running your company from your garage great many of us are um, it is valuable to put contact information the catch is you probably don't want to put your home address 
So the alternative is a P.O. box. You can buy a P.O. box. The smallest one is like $40 a year. Very affordable, where you can get mail there and such. Because again, the spammers don't have contact information. They have this website that they put up very slick, very easy to buy and give your credit card number and such, but then there's no way to contact them when something goes wrong. That email address goes uh, to the trash can. But you as a real company, as a legitimate company, will have contact info. Maybe not your home address, but you can get a P.O. box. And it, and I know in my, uh, in my neighborhood post office, and someone corroborated it yesterday on the on the SEO class yesterday, the post office nowadays, they, they seem to be able to let you put their street address as a, as a real kind of address. Because sometimes you might say, this is a P.O. box, it's fake, anyone can buy a P.O. box. But my post office, I can use 830 Coon Drive plus the P.O. box number, Chula Vista, etc. And that looks like a real address rather than P.O. box 123 Chula Vista. So the post office now lets you use the real address to look more legitimate. That's how you can get around putting your real address, home address. As for phone number as well, well, I have my main cell phone number, and, it, and if it's going to be my business number, I might, it might open me up to spammers and stuff. Google has a service called Google Voice. It's a free service where you can get a free phone number. The catch is it's attached to an existing phone number. The value of that is you can attach it to more than one of your phones. So you can create a brand new Google Voice number with your area code and even get it like when it's you know 1-800-CALL-NOW, you can get one of those kinds of phone numbers. So let's say you get a Google Voice number and you attach it to your cell phone and your home phone. Someone calls the Google Voice number and it rings on both phones and you answer it on the one that you're at. Or you can set it to go directly to voicemail. So you give out, I have my main phone number that I hardly give out to, real, to, to most people, but I give out my Google Voice number. Because it goes to my voicemail, I get a notification that I got a new voicemail, I get a text, I can hear it, I can deal with it, and then call them back. I can mark them on Google Voice Spammer, I'll never get their call again, and it's free. So that's how you can get around putting, instead of your real phone, get a Google Voice. Instead of your real address, get a PO Box. Email addresses, you can get them wherever, Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever. But with an email address, my recommendation here should be something, something at your domain. Not literally something, but yourdomain.com. Not Hotmail, not Gmail, not all those free ones. I can make victorsbakery.gmail.com. So can any spammer. But only I can have sales at victorsbakery.com because I paid for it. Those are a paid domain name. And that makes you more legitimate. All right, if I've got questions at victorswebdesign.com net dot biz doesn't matter dot co when I have one of those that I'm paying for on a yearly basis that's legitimacy dot gmail is not dot hotmail is not yes I, I got a little bit confused there but basically you're saying if you pay for it has more legitimacy and the ones you pay for are which ones the ones you pay for are the ones that are going to have your domain name. If I bought victorsbakery.com, I'm going to have an email that's questions at victorsbakery.com, sales at victorsbakery.com. Those are the legitimate ones. As opposed to God Victor's God. Bakery, well, victorsbakery God. at gmail.com, victorsbakery at hotmail.com, victorsbakery at yahoo.com. Those are not the legitimate ones because anyone can create those for free. But here you've actually paid for legitimacy. Is that where you, you go to like GoDaddy and pay for that? Exactly. Okay. We'll have a, a lecture on that because there's so many companies out there to do this. But in short, the big ones, GoDaddy, Bluehost, or HostMonster. I've dealt with those. They work really well. Their prices are varied, and they have a lot of services. But GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster. Bluehost, you said? Bluehost. Also HostGator. We've dealt with them. 
Creator. Um, there's many of them out there. You might know a great one. You might uh, have a good coupon for one or whatever. It, if it works for you, it works for you. Great. These are the ones that I know my company has dealt with. Call them on the phone, tech support. We got our answers. They work. I'm sure there's many, many others that also work really well, but these are the ones I can speak to. Those are pretty cheap, too. They are. So to get to stake out your own little piece of the internet could be uh, as little as 20 to $80 a year. Even $80 is not so bad. Yeah, to have your own piece of the internet and legitimately, uh, legitimacy. So this handout again, you don't have to fill it in and turn it in. You won't get a grade. If you want a grade A plus, sure. But uh, if you want me to read it and give you an opinion and such, I I can. And this is a version of what my company does when we start a project with a new company because we want to do the best possible job for that company. So when that company succeeds, we succeed. We, we succeed in more, more work with them or word of mouth or, or whatever. And so we do this early on for a company. I'm giving this to you for free for you to think about, fill in. Um, fill it in with the interested parties of your company. The problem, of course, uh, is uh, if you give people the, the opportunity for an opinion, people will have an opinion. So I would uh, let the people that have um, that can make decisions make this decision. Don't give this to like every person in, in the company to fill it out. You know, the one or two people that can make decisions make the decision, or else you're going to be governed by committee and you'll never get anything done. So that's the company profile. I'll have other such handouts and advice sheets and such as the course goes on, and I have one more for you today. But any questions on this one? Thanks. More of the credit goes over to Sharna. She developed it, but I, I sell it. Okay. okay. Let me show you, let me give you another handout here. I'm going to put a new item in the network folder. As, as our time runs into the lab time soon, I'm going to give you a new handout. We're an activity where you develop the, those keywords that I'm talking about. This is an activity where you're going to figure out your keywords. And then on the next classes, we're going to use your keywords. So let me get that in there. I put in a brand new file in that network folder called Campus SEO1 Long Tail Strategy. I'll turn the printer on later, but you want to drag that to your desktop. How many of you brought a, uh, a USB flash drive today? If you didn't, you can email these things to yourself, or they'll be here next time also. I don't put them online like the videos. I, I have them here. You have to be here to take the class. But you can take, the, take it with you on USB drive or mail it to yourself. But if you uh, get a copy of that long tail strategy and open it up, let's see what that's about. Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found by authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. So as I said, the search engines change the goal posts every once in a while. SEO is a moving target because once an algorithm is developed and people start using it, then spammers start using it. Then that gets corrupted. Google and Bing has to change their algorithm. Now there's new requirements. So some techniques that used to work don't work anymore. And worse, some techniques that used to work now actually hurt you. One of them is keyword stuffing. If I had the keyword web design, in the old days, you would put that keyword everywhere. Victorswebdesigns.com, in the logo, in the headings, in the footer, in your paragraphs, everywhere, so that the search engines understand your site is about web design. 
and the spammers abuse that. And they use such techniques also as writing text in white color on a white background. So for us it's invisible. White on white is invisible. But the search engines would see it because they just see the code and they would hide keywords on their page invisibly. And that was known as a black hat technique. Black hat SEO, white hat SEO. Black hat. In the cowboy movies, when the bad guys came in to shoot up the town and take over, what kind of hat were they wearing? A black hat. When the sheriff came to clean up the town, what kind of hat was he wearing? White hat. So black hat SEO, white hat SEO. Bad techniques, good techniques of SEO. This class is all about white hat SEO, of course. I'll mention the black hat techniques here and there for you not to do it, because now they penalize you. Keyword stuffing, invisible text, link building schemes, these sorts of things that I'll go into more detail don't work anymore, and they penalize you. And yes, there's in the middle gray hat techniques. I avoid those as well, because those are techniques that at the moment work, but they might be abused and they're not as legitimate. So white hat SEO is the long tail keyword strategy. Developing these keywords that are more specific. And that requires competitor analysis. That's what this activity is. We're going to search keywords, generic keywords, and then we're going to search long tail keywords, and we're going to scope out the competition. We're going to see what sites appear with those keywords. And then we're going to see what's the competition doing, what's the competition doing right, and how can we do it righter? More right. How can we do it better than the competition? So if you'd like, we can get started on this activity here. Again, you're not going to need to turn this in. I'm not going to grade you on this. But the way I would do this is, you can do this on plain old paper, or I would recommend our computers have Word. So I recommend if we open up Microsoft Word, go to the Start menu, type Word, and launch Word. So we can write some notes here and copy and paste. I think this is a little bit better. But if you open up Word, any word processor, and then create a blank document, blank document, and this will be competitor analysis. Keyword, just an ex as an example, because we're going to do a basic keyword analysis and then a long tail keyword analysis. I'm going to check out what's going on. I always use this fictional company, Victor's Bakery, and people start to ask me, do you really have a bakery? No, but I do like to cook and, and bake and such. And I guess if I wasn't teaching, I might be doing that. Uh, so I'm going to look up just simply the word bakeries. Bakery. I want to find out what's the competition on Google and Bing of bakery. So as, as much time as you want to devote to this and effort, when my company does this, we, we took about a week at least to, to do this. We, we get hired by a client, we go to the big two search engines, we type in keywords, and we start to see what's the competition. Because first, a very basic search, bakery. Let's say I was hired by a bakery. So we get the map, we get these results. The thing about the results page is I'm going to say if you get any ads, skip the ads because obviously they're paying for placement. You want to look for results that point directly to a company. Right away I'm seeing Yelp. Skip that. I'm seeing another Yelp. Skip it. Send me a new one. Skip it. City Builder. Skip it. I'm looking for real companies. Twigs Bakery. Twigs.org. So there's one hit here, at least, of a real company with this keyword. So I'm going to copy those results, the, the title, the web address, and the description. And when we work on our site, I'll show you how to edit all of that and optimize. But that's what they wrote in their title and then their description, their meta title, their meta description. 
plus their address. I'm going to copy that, and in Word, you have this cool trick where you can paste, but instead of simply write, instead of pasting normal, you can right click and select keep text only. Because if you do a regular kind of paste, it's going to come in with the word, with the colors and the bullet points and all that cumbersome stuff. If you simply paste as regular text, you can focus on the text. That's right click, keep text only. And I'm going to compile as many as you want. And the activity here, I think I say three. You can do three, five, ten, thirty. You can look at the competition about what's appearing with that keyword. But you're not going to stop there because then you're actually going to click on the result to get more intel before I go on. This right here is the meta title. And this over here is the meta description. This, of course, up here is the address or URL. All of this is editable for us, and all of this helps your ranking on the search engines. One of many things that help you. But if we put some of our keywords and such in here, that helps us. I'll go into detail, of course, because th th some of these things do have diminishing returns if you do too much of this. But I put the keyword bakery, and it gave me Twigs Bakery. I never mentioned San Diego, but it knew San Diego because our web browsers nowadays actually are transmitting a lot of information that we don't even realize. And one is location, general location information. So it's giving me a bakery from San Diego, California, instead of San Diego, Texas. There's a San Diego in Texas. And then it gives us a description. Twigs is a boutique bakery specializing in cakes for all occasions. Weddings, birthdays, parties. We have two cafe coffee houses in University Heights. Very good description there because it hits all of these keywords. Someone that's searching for Cafe University Heights, they could appear. Someone that's searching for Boutique Bakery, this could appear. Special events, weddings, could appear. So that's why it's not just about a simple keyword. I had in my mind bakery, but as I do the competition, I'm seeing that they're also writing about Boutique Bakery. Or, or that sort of thing. As I said, I'll further go into detail by actually clicking on the competition and to check their site. And I might not have the language of a web designer, but I'm going to, gut feeling, talk about the good and the bad. Right away, I thought it was a little slow. It opened up a little slow. I can write that down. Slow to you might not be slow to other people, but uh, seemed a bit slow to load. On the front page, I see a very ornate background, relatively simple design. Everything seems to fit on one screen full. My screen's a little bit smaller than yours, but if I zoom out, it probably shows up a little bit more like this. This is a one-page site here with all the relevant information right away. Relevant such as their location, 2804 Adams Avenue. And they're also at 4950 Park Boulevard. So some of that contact information is visible right away. Phone number is visible right away at the top too. So I'm going to say Contact info phone visible right away. We're going to look at a website in a more critical view. It could be objective or subjective. Subjectively, this is horrible. What is that? Okay. Okay. A loading graphic there for some reason, cake, I suppose. The rest of it looks nice ish, but that up there. No point for that. The, you can tell that originally there was no graphic there, and the owner said, why is that so empty? Put something there. So my gut feeling right there is that is pretty bad looking. It would have been better like this. Yes, I did just hack into their website and change their code. No, just kidding. Uh, but 
it would be it would look better like that, wouldn't it? Perhaps. What if that were centered? What if that little bit were centered? Longer. Or longer. So I would write that down. Weird graphic at the top. Wish logo was longer. So any objective, subjective opinion that you have, you are going to swallow your pride and just try to see what's say something nice about the competition. If this, if I was a bakery, this is my competition. So I would say what's nice. I like this slideshow that's showing off these cakes. I'm kind of getting impressed. That's a really good looking minion right there. Can't wait to eat it. So, okay, nice graphics. My website doesn't have any. I forgot to put a slideshow. Maybe that's what's affecting my traffic as well. Visually, I'm not getting repeat traffic because the site doesn't show off my wares. I spent a lot of time to get my site up and my contact information and such, and I forgot to put pictures of my cakes. So, whatever, whatever comes to mind, positive or negative. There's Twitter, there's Facebook. As I said, just having a website is not enough. There's a blog. Uses social media uses blog. A negative is, I think that menu is way too cluttered. I know that they've got an Adams Avenue location in university, but putting them both there clutters it more. What if they consolidated it into locations? And from locations you get the drop down of university and Adams. But in cakes, custom cakes, which almost sounds redundant, our bakery has cakes and pies, but you've also got custom cakes over here. Gallery, kind of a big gallery, but at least it's a drop down rather than it being stuck out like that. That's nice, nice big graphic to show what you're, what you're buying. Photo quality varies a little bit. Some of these graphics, some of these photos look nice, and some of them is a little bit kind of fuzzy. Weird background over there, distracting. So anything that that you write, uh, too many graphics. I don't need to see so many graphics. Um, a few of them do get the point across. They're obviously proud of their work, but I don't quite need to see two angles of that. <coughs> this is pretty nice. No wonder they're number one. Well, they're actually like seventh place on the first page, but that's such a competitive keyword. The point of that also is that search over here, so many of these slots are taken by things you're not going to dethrone, like Yelp. So make a note. What if my bakery has, list, has a listing on Yelp? What if my company has a listing on Yelp? That could be that my website doesn't have a listing here, but if my company is on Yelp, I am almost number one compared to them because someone can visit that Yelp, and people use Yelp a lot. And that's one of the aspects of, of SEM. I'm going to make a side note over here. Yelp review sites is helpful. You want to have a listing on Yelp, and everyone's on Yelp now even if you don't think you are. Someone could create a profile for you on Yelp and give you that bad review, and you don't even know about it. So if you look yourself up on Yelp and find that you've got a bad review there, one of the things you want to do is claim your business on Yelp. It's free. <laughs> you claim your business so that you can respond to the negative reviews and hopefully turn them into positive reviews, not by bribes and saying, please come again for 50% off, by saying, we apologize for our service, we had a bad server experience that day, that does not reflect our usual customer service, please come back another day and we'll make it better. Not offering a free meal or anything like that because people make a cottage industry of complaining on Yelp to get free stuff. Don't give free stuff on Yelp. Give better service, the promise of better service, or to fix something on Yelp. Yelp is one of the big review sites. Do you know of any others? Google. What's that? Google. Google itself also has Google reviews. 
So you might find your company being reviewed on Yelp and you never realized it. So you can claim that business and deal with reviews. You've got also Angie's List. Have you heard of that one? That's another review site where you would hire, let's say, a roofer, and then you read reviews. There's kudzu.com. Kudzu. However you like to pronounce it. Kudzu.com. That's another review site. Some of these that I know off the top of my head because I deal with a lot of companies that have a service that you can review. And then there's also TripAdvisor, but that one's much more focused on restaurants and hotels and such. Someone in, uh, someone from Washington, uh, someone from Seattle coming, uh, trying to escape the rain, coming in to send you to enjoy our rain. Um, they want to know where to eat locally, TripAdvisor works on that. And I've got a client in there that they're highly reviewed on TripAdvisor, like 90 reviews, uh, like 4.75 stars. And people uh, very highly rate them there. And that, again, you might not be, your site might not rank number one. But if you're, if you've got a presence on these ancillary sites, that would be better. Because I've got some clients that their Yelp shows up number one instead of their main site, and that's a win. I don't have to get them to the website if I get them to Yelp, and on my Yelp I've got a phone number, order now, and all of that. So that's the, that's the competitor analysis. Uh, we kind of only have one time to do kind of one, but that's what we would be doing. As many of these keywords as you want to research, as many of these companies as you want to look at, you might not have the terminology to be to look at this with a academic eye but that's fine you want to put your your feeling about it positive and negative the second part of the of the activity is then the long tail keyword where you're going to be searching a much more detailed query but note i have this footnote in a clean search engine search for a long tail keyword from your niche the footnote is a clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox for when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to find how to reset yours. This is important to get results like your potential visitors or customers. Because I get lots of people that come into my classes that say, when I search my long tail keywords at home, I appear number one. But when other people search, I appear on page 12. Why? Well, that's because your web browser is getting in your way. As you use your web browser, it learns about you and it knows that you like to visit um, Facebook often or that you search things often and it saves that to help you so that it helps you get back to the things you do often but this is then hurts you when you try to do this competitor analysis because it's going to show you biased results when someone out of town searches those same keywords they're going to get different results simply because the GPS is going to give them different location results and so the advice here is However it's done on your web browser, you have to look it up somewhere, clean the cookies, delete the history, reset the browser. You can also go into private mode, incognito mode, protected mode, whatever the browser calls it, where that is supposed to keep uh, here, incognito. Pages you view in incognito tabs won't stick around in your browser's history, cookies or search history after you've closed it. So it doesn't keep a trail of you to do these searches. I'm more paranoid. I clean the cookies, reset the browser, and then do incognito just to make sure it's the most uh, blank slate because that's how your customers are searching. They don't have your search history. So if you want to be as much like your customer, you do this. The problem with clearing out your cookies and all of that is it's going to forget your passwords and your search history and maybe it's going to log you out of your bank and and your email and, and Facebook and all of that, and you'll have to log back in. That's why I say in my notes here, if you usually are using Internet Explorer, just download another browser and use it only for this competitor analysis. Who cares if you nuke the settings every day? It's not, it's not omitting your saved information from your main browser. 
If you're on your Mac and you're usually using Safari, don't clean out Safari. It's going to forget all your passwords. Download free Firefox and use that. Learn how it works and how to erase the history and then do the competitor analysis. That's how you're going to get results in a clean search engine. And then you're going to do the long tail. You're going to type in a little bit more. If I do instead, um, vegan friendly bakery in Chula Vista. Best vegan bakery in Chula Vista. Number one result again is Yelp. Let's say a person goes there, and right here, yeah, Wingstop's a great, a great bakery. Uh, we've got Valerio's Bakery. So people might not even go to the search engine. So they might just go directly to these review sites with hundreds of millions of users, and they go over to Karma Free Bakery, extraordinary desserts, like everyone else. Notice Extraordinary Desserts has 5,300 reviews, but still Valerio's Bake Shop is, is higher in National City for various reasons. So, the very end of this activity then is, okay, you're going you're gonna to write this stuff down. You're going to compile this list of 10 simple keywords and 5 complete phrases, your long tail keywords. In the future classes, we'll show what to do with them. We've got them, but now what do I do with them? We'll see how we can add them effectively to our site, how to use them effectively on our LinkedIn, how to use them on our blog, how to use them on a YouTube video. But all of this, then, is the whole complicated topic of SEO. Not necessarily difficult, but complicated. And this is a full-time job you can get a company that manages SEO full-time. Um, you yourself can do it as well as you learn the pieces of the puzzle to apply. But what I say is that, let's say you decide, uh, this is a lot of work, I'm just trying to run my company, fine. Hire a company, but hopefully with some of the education that you have, you know that they're doing it the right way, that they're not wasting your money that they're not taking the money, that you're paying them and engaging in PPC without telling you. They might have bought ads for you, and yes, you're number one. Then when your contract runs out with them, the money runs out for PPC, and you're not number one anymore. People have come to this class and tell me that. I used to be number one. I hired a company, and I'm not number one anymore. I asked, did you still work with that company? Yes. I mean, no. Did they ever uh, do PPC for you? They say, what's PPC? So who knows how some companies work, but I'm trying to give you all the knowledge yourself to do it yourself or to be comfortable with someone else doing it for you. Because again, this is a moving target. This is constantly changing. The last thing that I'll say, and then we'll wrap it up, is let me show you a website where you can keep up with this stuff. SearchEngineLand.com one of the many blogs out there. I recommend this one. I read it often. SearchEngineLand.com All about articles, up-to-date articles, all about SEO, SEM, mobile search, local search, retail search, specifically Google, specifically Bing. So it's a blog site. It's an article site about all of this great stuff. illegitimate SEO sentenced to 37 months in federal prison for extortion. What's that about? An SEO company named William Stanley was sentenced to more than three years in prison in order to pay $174,000 in fees for SEO extortion. Bing now powers AOL search. What advertisers need to know? Look at that, AOL now. They're saying, Bing, your results now are going to be coming through AOL. People still use AOL. It has millions of users. Um, and now when they search something on AOL search, now they're getting Bing results. Again, another reason to know the rules, the do's and the don'ts of Bing, not just Google. That's why I talk about search engine optimization. That's why I talk about 
searching or the verb search it and such. I don't say Google it. It's not the only game in town. It's the biggest name, the biggest game, but it's not the only one. And as we're seeing here, Bing is, is, is ascending. Cut the fat, how to reduce wasted ad spend on your AdWords account. So if you're doing PPC, are you paying too much? Here's an article on that. Six trends shaping location marketing in 2016. Marketing, SEM. If you've got a business on Main Street, that requires its own sort of set of um, tactics to get traffic from the locals around you. This article right here. So, a lot to think about. This is day one of four. Again, as I said, I've recorded all of this that I've lectured on. If you'd like access to those lectures, send me an email. My email is on page one of the syllabus. That way you get on my mailing list so I can contact you for future classes or, or other class-related things. General questions? If you took a previous class of mine, I would send another email and then ask for the videos of the Thursday SEO class. Because if it was another class, it's a different playlist. So when you send me the email, ask for the Thursday SEO videos. I teach more than one class. All right, that's it for the moment. When we come back next time, we'll go. We'll talk about week two. Bring your login information to connect the search engines to your site.